to start off with a question for Kristen. And just and a confession too. When I was a kid watching the cartoon version of Sleeping Beauty, I always thought Maleficent was kind of hot. And then you played her, and I knew she was definitely hot. And Angelina did okay too. No, she thought Ruella was hot. I just like to say. I differ. I differ. She just had that puppy thing. Yeah. Uh, Kristen, has it been interesting seeing Maleficent really thrust into the forefront of popular culture with the release of Snow White, or sorry, of Sleeping Beauty on Blu-ray, and then the Angelina Jolie film, and you were already playing her on once. Yeah, it definitely changed since the first season to the last season that we did in popular culture, you know, that you get, I've gotten to sort of get a bit of that overflow from Angelina Jolie, I think, and from Sleeping Beauty, and so it's changed. Even my wardrobe changed, you know, it's been cool. <laughs> nice to be back. Okay. Aaron. Hi. Hi. I have a question from Phelps. Hi. Um, my question is for Kristen. When we were seeing the flashback episode with Regina and Maleficent, I kind of got like a vibe that there was something there. So do you think that, <laughs> do you think that maybe Maleficent and Regina may have, a, may have had a relationship? And also, um, I thought that Cruella and Ursula definitely had something going on. So <laughs> so many scenes to do in the beginning before we raised you from the dead. And, uh, you know, we just got on like a house on fire and I think that, you know, it just... It, it translates, translates, which is nice. We were, uh, I kept on saying we were Starsky and Hutch, but you said we were Ziggy and who? Lenny and Squiggy. Lenny and Squiggy. <laughs> I've never heard it's of It's American. I can uh, try you know, to find it on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we've got a question from Elizabeth. <laughs> Hello, my question is for the three of you. If you three could be on any televised game show, which would it be and why? Ooh. Ooh, a okay. game show. Game show, an American one. <laughs> I'd be rubbish at Jeopardy. It can be either British or American, it doesn't matter. Is Graham Norton a game? That's not a game show. No, Graham Norton's a chat show, but he'd be fun. Yeah. <laughs> he'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> Can we do family, family Fortunes as a family? I think it's Family uh, Feud here. Okay. Can we do that? Family Feud. Oh, it's called Family Feud. Yes. yes. <laughs> See, you Americans have to turn it into the angry stuff. We're talking fortune. <laughs>
So yeah, that would be perfect. Aaron? Our next question is from Celine. Okay, so this is for everybody. I want to know what your go-to dance move is, and can you demonstrate it? I'm pretty sexy, I won't lie. <laughs> Just prepare yourselves, because uh, I'm pretty sexy. Um, one is this one. <laughs> I 
accent, I'm afraid. Do it. So, Vanilla, wherever you are, I apologise. It goes something like this. Do, 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 Collaboration, listen, noise is back with this brand new edition, something grabs a hold of me tight, feel the floor like a half-grown alien, like you will never stop, no, I don't, no, turn off the lights, no, 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 to the stream, I walk the mic like a band on light, I say to my tongue like a hand on floor. I know. 
know it, what, I know, I'm sure you can. Uh, I mean, I like to listen to Disney radio with the children in the car. I can, I can. Bar and fortune it's so.
wasn't that Joanna Lumley though, and someone did say that my Corolla voice was borderline Joanna Lumley from a uh, uh, fab. So I thought maybe secretly I robbed that without knowing, but no one could ever talk to Joanna Lumley. Um, oh, I don't know. Maybe. I, uh, I don't want to think so. What did that like? Your turn. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's I don't know. I mean, both I feel ditto because on one hand, once I was allowed to play tough and a character that really didn't care about being liked, because that's very different from being mortal. Uh, it's, and it's really fun. I, I thought that was a real hallmark of Pam. And then I did, you know, Maleficent also had that quality. And also you like to think that it's a, its own creation, each character, but you have kind of practiced a little bit, you know, being, being a blunt. So, and if, you know, the character, both Pam and Lefson, they didn't try very hard. They just didn't give a shit. So that, um, I think it did help that I've been doing Pam for a while. Aaron? Our next question is from Kristen. Hi, um, I was wondering what it was like to um, leave the Once Upon a Time family, and then I was also wondering if um, you guys were part of any pranks, or if anybody pulled any pranks on you behind the scenes. Uh, it's hard to find time for pranks, because you work pretty hard and relentlessly, and it's, it's fantastic, but Josh is a very funny devil. Um, and will always sort of bring a lightness and a fun to the set. They all do, actually. They all do. Um, but I can't think of one. A lot of the pranks ended up on screen, like um, Jenny constantly making me fall down with frying pans and magic sleeping dust. And well, she photobombed us that one time, too. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah that's all like, boom. <laughs> they're, they're, they're a really good, fun cast. They're as magical and fun and talented as you want them to be. They really are. Um, I can't. Can you think of a prank? I can. Oh, go. <laughs> Colin. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like I tell this story several times now, so you probably already heard Have you heard this story? No. You've heard the story? No. What? No. Okay. So, <clears throat> when I was working with Colin, I was getting ready to do this big scene where the, the shell, we get the shell, and the shell doesn't work, and it doesn't light up, and I'm like, it's a big, like, emotional, like, change where, like, I'm, like, threatening him, or, you know, we're working together, and then, you know, whatever. So, it's a, there's a lot going on at the scene. And he, you know, he's been doing this forever. <laughs> so he's like walking around and I'm like trying to like get my lines and get ready and he just keeps coming, coming up and going, all about the bass. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, first of all, I cannot stand that song. And second of all, oh my God, like I'm trying to work. And he, like, I, I was like running around like finding different corners on the set to just hide so I could work. And I'm going, all about that bass. <laughs> and I was gonna kill him. And then we get through the scene, whatever, blah, blah, have a great day. And then the next day we have to work and we're in like this forest, and I get down there, and I was like, "Good morning, Mary," and I'm like, "Good morning," and then like 15 crew members are like, "All about that face." <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> so, Colin, what's but yeah, it was uh, uh, leaving the like not yeah, it was just very terribly sad. I mean, it's such a, it really is like you know, feel proud of your fandom of this show because you really have found you you are you are you know loving a good one because. You know, we've all worked with people where it's like, ooh, you know, and they go like, look at how it's so, and you're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, you know, but the, everybody here is soup to nuts, cast and crew, like a real lovely bunch of coconuts, and they're, <laughs> they take care of each other, and they work really hard, and, you know, God, they're just, they're, they're a lot of fun. Yeah, it's very sad to leave. Yeah, really sad. Yeah, I remember when we showed up, and I was, for some reason I've been flying around, I don't know, I was very tired when I got picked up by the transport guy and he had just dropped off the frozen bunch and they had left. And he said it was so sad, you know, and everyone was so sad to leave and, and I thought, I don't think I'll be sad to leave. Like, and then cut to four months later, dropping us at the airport, we were so sad, <laughs> you know, it just, I just didn't imagine that we would bond so much and a relatively short amount of time, but we really did. It's like camp, because you're like up it's there camp. in a different you, place, yeah. you know, away from You know, when you're on location away from home, we really
Canadian money. money. Canadian money. Just Canadian <laughs> colorful, cute money. <laughs> That's a candy land. It's so cute. Um, you know, we're in a hotel together, and also everybody is incredibly funny, and there's a lot of laughing that goes on on the set, and I had been used to pranksters on True Blood, and Stephen Moyer was really good at it. So they told me Josh was a prankster, and I said, oh, you're nothing compared to what I'm used to, so do your worst. <laughs> you will not be able to break me in a tank. And the crew was like, oh. <laughs> Challenge I thought, extended. Oh, oh no, what have I done? <laughs> and he did something really bizarre and arbitrary and funny in almost every take, and of course made me laugh. You, you're funny too. Like you with that staff that had that dragon on oh, it, yeah. and everyone smiled for but you. you you would just be doing something and like, we be, and then she'd just go, what? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what time lunch is. <laughs> I would lose it. <laughs> I remember when we were in the woods walking, we had to walk down in through the woods, and I got the staff, and I was kind of, you know, like a walking stick, and then I thought, that might not be right. <laughs> and for the next take, I said, you guys, should I, like, use it like a walking stick or just hold it steady, like, above the ground? And she goes, hold it steady, you're not fucking Gandalf. <laughs> Okay, this question's from Mara. Um, you, uh, it's for all of you. Uh, would you either like to date the uh, character Prince Charming or Captain Hook? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Um, my kids, you know, it's just, and they inspire me on the daily to keep 
going and I like to show them that mommy likes what she does and is really proud of what she does and that she's good at what she does and um, it makes me happy to do what I do and it makes me happy to get the response you know for what I do and I want them to go and do something that they love so it's like a little hopefully revolving circle of an inspiration. You gonna cry? Yeah. <laughs> Deep. So I, I, I've been reading a bunch of autobiographies and then I've gotten to meet some of these people who are doing a lot of animal rescue and Whoa. they're doing it for no money. They live, they live below poverty level and put everything into just one life at a time. And it's amazing. <laughs> I keep telling you, Dad, stop crying for free. <laughs> for all three of you lovely ladies. Um, I was wondering what Disney villains or villains in general would you like to see in Once Upon a Time in the future? We've been having a hard time coming up with options. I feel yeah, like they came up they with Freddy the... Yeah, we came up with Freddy Krueger, but apparently he wasn't from Disney. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the, the, the aliens. Uh, yeah, we're having a hard time, but who's left? Who do you want to see? Who, yeah, who do you want to see? Jafar! Who? Yeah. Jafar! Jafar! But we heard Jafar had already been yes. on the land. Scar! Oh, Scar the lion. That's hard. That's a little hard. They were lions. <laughs> From Lion King, they're animals. They're animated. Well, well they're all animated. Hercules. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I kind of think that Rumpelstiltskin is kind of the devil. <laughs> it's a tough. It's a tough one. one. I mean, like you're, you're pulling from like some, you know, you're really trying to dig deep. You're digging deep. You're digging deep. So yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think that they really. I think you know what the greatest thing's going to be seeing the Dark Swan. Yes. That yes. villain is going to be yes. the guess. That's a real... And Camelot with Merlin. I mean, you've got some interesting things coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. Erin? Our next question is from Logan. Hi, this question is for all three of you. I was wondering if there is any character that you would like the writers to bring back onto the show. Me? <laughs> Of a follow-on to that. 
the other two kind of got a happy ending. I mean, you got back with Poseidon, and you, got, you found your daughter, yeah. and you ended up dead. Do you feel, <laughs> do you feel that Cruella was really beyond salvation? I must have really irritated somebody. <laughs> um, no, I, you know what, I take it as a, a privilege, a position of privilege. I genuinely do, because, um, you know, their, their baseline was always, you know, that evil wasn't born. And they changed their baseline thinking for Cruella. And I kind of love that. I love, I love the fact that they said just one time only we're going to actually create a character that was truly born unrepentantly evil and quite happy about it. You know, a true sociopath. And, um, uh, you know, if Cruella was an everyday land, she'd probably be running Coca-Cola or something. I mean, she'd be, she, but she's, she's, I, I love the fact that they did that. Um, and obviously on, on American TV and it's Disney and it's ABC, we don't want to revere that, so you must die. And I, I get that as a, a circle. But I, to me, she was the most honest villain because, you know, she was pretty, you know, I'm a very terrible person, darling, and I left her in the woods to die. <laughs> <laughs> because she, she knew who she was. And I, so no, I, though, though I had to die for it, um, I kind of feel like there was a, a, an integrity to her sociopathicness, <laughs> if that's a word that I might have just made up. I'll take it. Yeah, no, it's, it's a position of, it's a privilege. It's a privilege. Okay, next question is from Edith. This is actually kind of going off of what you just said. A lot of villains have this very standard, oh, they're a bad person. After finding out the backstory for your character, how did that affect how you played them? Well, we didn't find out until like way into the thing, you know, because they didn't go, okay, so here's who she is, and here's what you're playing, and here's why, and blah, 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 because then, I mean, which is great, so then you, it, it doesn't inform what you're doing. You know, you don't have to give it all away. And then once you get that information, it's sort of right before you're kind of about to go into your backstory episode. Um, you know, I, I, I just was, I, I, I do love that, you know, um, idea that they have that evil isn't born, it's made, and there's a reason for, you know, why Ursula, you know, did what she did and became who she, you know, became. And it, it you know, it, it made, at least, for me to do that episode, like so fulfilling because there was so much behind it, so much reason, so much heart, and so much feeling, and and something that she really desired, you know. Um, so you know, it, it, it didn't inform all of that which I played, but it, it really did inform that episode. I loved it when I read uh, Sympathy for Deville. I I, <laughs> um, I was so excited by the idea <clears throat> that we're going back to the jazz era that they were going to make her young and innocent and wide-eyed and, and trapped in an attic and naughty mummy and I kind of, I loved that journey and reeling in the author and having to do that um, in a very pure sense until she turned and um, I, 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 I relished every second of that episode, I really did uh, and uh, I took great pleasure in trying to and I was scared, to, you know, I really wanted to get it right, to get those sort of gradual steps up to, um, to full-on crew crew's evil, um, which, which, which I, really, I really loved it, actually. I loved it. And I love the fact that I didn't know beforehand, because like Merit says, you're then just playing the page that's in front of you rather than the end story. No worries, you got it right. Oh, bless you, love. Thanks. Money's in the post. <laughs> Yeah, we did. We we all knew that we would get our backstory episode, and we were all kind of wondering what it was, and wondering when it would come out, and in what order it would come out. And then when the scripts came out, you know, it's pretty exciting when we get to read what's going to happen. And I can't remember what order that happened, but we were all excited for each other. And I was in the middle of playing that my daughter was dead. I thought. And I was really glad that I didn't know when I was playing that, that she wasn't, you know, I just wanted to have that one thought in my head that she was gone. And then, but I did see Eddie on the set one day, and it was right before, like, an emotional crying, she's gone thing. And he goes, but, but she's not, but, but she's, anyway. And I was like, what? <laughs> okay, forget I heard that. And then 
I had that in my head, and I was wondering who it is, you know, looking around the set and watching back episodes, and here's my daughter. And it was very interesting to find out, and I'm glad it was somebody not on the show before, you know. That it's is snow or something. Yeah, it's like I was looking at... Um, it's Robert and Carlo. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting, like, who's that guy who does all those paternity tests on like this talk show? Maury Povich? Like, who's your daddy? Oh, <laughs> Sitting there with Prince Charming, gold, and like, and then they announce it. And they announce it to it. Slut. Our next question comes from Hagen. So during yesterday's panel, y'all told us about an outtake from the trade team where y'all were all dancing in the car. Is there any way that could, or, sing, or outtake could be released to the public? It's on your phone. It's on my phone, and I will talk Yay. to Lana. three other ladies <laughs> on and uh, see how they feel about that. I'm there. <laughs>
and then another one's saying, it's awesome, it's gonna be big, these are the lost people's wrong in you, and someone else is saying, no, no, I don't wanna put her on the show, well, what are they gonna pay? And they're arguing in my mom, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just waiting for them to finish, you know, this argument, and I had no idea how to decide, and mom hates to be late, so I had a, I got a quarter out of my pocket, and it was like heads I knew it, tails I know flipped, and I said, I'm doing it. I gotta go. My mom hates being late. <laughs> and I didn't know that, of course, it would be, I didn't know if it would be one scene, or many, or a fourth season with these ladies. At that time, it was just you want to do one day.
fun. Uh, well, we had we had sort of like a film noir setup where um, we were. It was the end of the day. It was very late, and suddenly the rain came out of the sky the way it does in Vancouver. And we still had this sort of face-off with my car, me and Earth, and the Charmings, and the rain came bucketing down, and they made this very quick, genius um, uh, idea to give us all black uh, umbrellas. So we come out of the car for the walk. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, darling. It's here. And uh, we had this sort of face, and it just looked so sort of film noir. It was, it was really, really stunning. That was, that was a lot of fun. Oh, I, <laughs> I did struggle to keep the straight face, and I think it's a problem, Sheriff Chiselton, because Josh would just pee his pants every time. Said it. So that, that, that was just oh, all, all of it, it all, of it, all, all of, it, of it, all of it, all of it, it was great, all, all of it, it, all of it, making her go to sleep as a giant all dragon. All of it. I mean, there were a lot. I, was, I love the scene when we all started. You know, when yeah. we were ending up in that, and I was like doing my fish walk. Like, yeah. yeah. And, 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 like, Give them the fish walk.